This is Jennifer. I'm so glad you're here. And today I am addressing something I get asked about a lot, and that is ideas for what to do inside of cards. Now, I have done a video about what I usually do inside of cards. I'll link to it at the end of this one if you want to check that out. But in this video, I'm sharing five ways to add interest inside of your card. They're all very simple, but you could step them up if you want. And be sure to come back because my video going up tomorrow will share five more ideas. Now today I'm also doing lots of stenciling and stamping. Great techniques for one layer cards, but be sure to come back for tomorrow's. Here's a peek at a couple cards that'll be in that video. I just made too many cards and had too many ideas to share in one video, so this is part one of two. All right, let's get started with this card and I'll show you what's on the inside once we create the front. For all of today's cards, I use the Altenew Patchwork Tile Stencils. You can see there's two stencils there. And there is a coordinating stamp set available. These are sold separately or together. And I will demonstrate using them separately and together. I really thought that you could do a lot with these stencils, so I'm gonna make a bunch of cards using them. But keep in mind, everything you see today, you could do with whatever stencils and stamps you may have. Now I mentioned these are from Altenew and whenever I get new products from Altenew I always check the like little brochure that comes with the products because there's always a lot of great ideas in there, color combinations and design suggestions. So it's a great place to kind of kick off your creativity. All right, this is the first card we're making and I'm going to do some stenciling and stamping and you'll see me discover a great way to do selective inking over a stencil. So I'm taking a note card. This is four and a quarter by five and a half inches, top folding white, and I'm placing it onto my Brutus Monroe stick and stamp mat. This is just a temporary sticky surface that will hold my note card and my stencil in place as I do my inking. Notice I'm using the grid lines to place my stencil kind of turned a bit. So the corners are pointing straight up and down and the other corners are pointing to the sides. This will just give me a different design than what the stencil is really intended to be used as. I put some scrap cardstock in the corners to block off where the stencil doesn't cover so I don't get any ink on the corners of my note card. I also have another scrap piece of cardstock blocking off some of the diamonds. I want to make sure that I'm only inking these top two diamonds with this pink ink. So I'm doing selective inking here. Instead of doing pink over the entire stencil, I'm just doing it in a certain diamonds or square openings. Now at this point, I'm just using scraps to kind of block off different areas. But you'll see it gets kind of complicated here. Notice I have to put a scrap on this part and a scrap over the other pink so that I'm able to just do those center two diamonds a blue color. I'm going to show you what I switched, the method I switched to doing the selective inking on my next card. But this is one way you can do it using scraps. I use some post-it notes there too that I can reuse a few times. After inking over the stencil, I'll give a quick one spray of rubbing alcohol, that's what I have in this green bottle here, and then wipe it with a dry cloth. That is really a fast way to clean ink off your stencil and you don't have a lot of water or you know, like a wet cloth when doing so. It dries quickly. Now I'll take the stencil and just turn it a bit. So it's the same stencil, but I'm gonna turn it. And when you turn it, the little engraved marks on the stencil line up with the inked diamonds you've already done. So now we'll be able to ink the diamonds to fill in the openings. It's very easy to line up, no effort at all. Again, my sticky mat will hold it all in place and I'm using this scrap of cardstock to kind of mask off so I can do this orange color on the sides there. As I'm going, I do like to just wipe off the excess ink with that dry cloth. I only use that spray of rubbing alcohol when I'm completely done with it because we don't want to spray alcohol onto our cardstock. All right, now I am masking off so I just have those two diamonds in the center open and we'll apply green ink over this. I'm using Altenew Crisp Dye Inks today, but you could use absolutely any inks that you prefer here, whatever ink type and colors you want. All right, so now you can see we're getting close to finishing this. We just need to do the diamond on the top and the bottom. 
If you want to save time, you could definitely do one color over all of it. In fact, I'm gonna show you a really fast way to use this stencil with multiple colors, much faster way, later in this video, so stay tuned for that. But for now, I wanted each of these diamonds to kind of have a different look to it to add a lot of interest to our card. All right, so once I have completed that, I can remove my stencil, give it a cleaning, and here we have our first note card. Next, we can add some stamping on top of these little inked tiles that we created. I took that same sticky mat and put it into my Misty stamping tool, but you could definitely do this with an acrylic block if you prefer. I'm using one of the square images from the patchwork tile stamp set that I showed you earlier, and I'm lining it up with one of my inked tiles or diamonds or squares, whatever you wanna call it, on my note card. I'm stamping with the same ink that I applied over the stencil, but I'm stamping it two or three times to make it darker. You could use a slightly darker ink if you wanted to, but I found that this was pretty easy to do. Now, by stamping multiple times, it makes the ink darker. And when we did the inking over the stencil, I didn't really go with the heavy hand, so it's actually lighter. So this is a really easy way to match up your stenciling with your stamping. This brings us to the inside of the card. For this first idea, I'll do a little border. Now you could do the border along the bottom of the inside of the card, but I'm gonna do mine towards the top. And I'm creating the border using the same products I used on the front of the card. So basically, I'm adding some stenciling inside of the card and a little bit of stamping. So any kind of stencil that you may use on the front, you can use that stencil on the inside. You could stencil over the whole inside with a light color of ink if you wanted to, but I'm just doing a light color of ink in a border right along the top of the uh, inside of the card. So I'm using the yellow, which matches the front of the card also. So you're kind of mimicking whatever stamps and st or stencils and design you have on the front. We'll get some more specific ideas for that later. Now I've placed the card and the sticky mat, it's still stuck to the mat there, into my Misty stamping tool and I'm doing the stamping on top of it. Now it's time to add a sentiment to the front and the inside. For the front, I'm using the Altenew Versatile Greeting die set. It also has a coordinating foil set that's available, but I'm using the die set today. I die cut thanks and the shadow die to put on the front of my card. Later, I'll be using this other set, the Sweet Sentiment die set. This is also a great one because you have the word dies and the shadow dies. And again, there are foil plates available if you're interested, but those are all sold separate, so you could get the dies by themselves. For a sentiment on the inside, I'm using this beautiful Altenew Gracious Peony stamp set. I chose the sentiment that says, for all you do, and I'll stamp that on the inside. I just went through my stash and looked for the perfect sentiment for inside of the card, and I chose this. While I was looking at it, I decided I need to use this stamp set later. I thought it was beautiful. You have that large stamp image, and then there's layering stencils that make it easy to color in, or you could use the layering stencils alone. I love when you have those options. All right, so let's go back to our card. For the front, I used the thanks die cut. I cut thanks from white cardstock and the shadow from black cardstock, glued those together and added it to the center front of the card. On the inside, I stamped for all you do. Here's a closer look at the stamping on the front. I did add some little sequins to the center of the patterns, just so it would kind of catch the light and add a little bit of sparkle. But really, it's a very simple card design. If you wanted it to be one layer, you could definitely have stamped thanks in the center instead of using the die cut. Then on the inside, we have that simple stenciling and stamp sentiment. Nothing rocket science here. You know, this is a very basic thing, but sometimes it's fun to think of how you can pull your products from the outside of your card onto the inside. Okay, let's move on to another card example. I did use the same colors, but I get a different look by using the stencils in a different way. If you want a completely different look, you could totally change up the colors. Off screen, I did the inking just like I did last time, using the stencils on the front of a note card. Now I'm going to add some interest on top of it. This is going to be with white pigment ink. One of my favorite ways to step up a st single stencil is to offset your stencil in ink with white ink, either below your colored inking or on top. This time I'm doing it on top. So I'm taking my stencil and I'm shifting it over to the right a bit. So I have my openings of the stencil, so it's right on the four corners of the color tiles below it. 
and look at what I figured out. The easiest way to just ink up one square at a time with whatever color you want. And that is to die cut an opening on a scrap of cardstock. I used a square die that's a bit bigger than the openings on my stencil. And I just put it right over the area I want to stencil ink over that and I don't have to worry about getting the ink in other areas where I don't want it. You'll see me use that again later on. Didn't think of that earlier. I've done it before, totally forgot about it, but boy is that a time saver. So I applied a generous amount of white pigment ink over the stencil that time and you can see how it softens it and gives a really cool look. You do want to heat set that to make sure that it dries completely so you don't smear it. All right, so now let's add some stamping. This is an image from the Patchwork Tiles stamp set. I There are a bunch of different images you could stamp in there. I chose this kind of diamondy looking image and I will stamp it with the same ink that I inked over the stencil with, but stamp it a few times so it shows up darker. I will continue to do this tone on tone stamping for each of the colored diamonds. First sentiment on this, I'm using the Alt New Fancy Miss You Die. I'm a big fan of these fancy style sentiments. This one fills the center of a card very nicely. So I die cut it from black three times, glued it together for a stacked dimension, and then added it to the center of our card. I also added some little pearls at the center of our stamping on the front. Now the second idea for what to do in your card is just to do a little bit of like a framed look of stamping on the inside that uses one of your stamps that's on the outside of your card. So in this case I took that little diamond image and just scattered it in the bottom corner and the top corner just to kind of frame in where I'll put my personal sentiment on the inside. If you have maybe a large floral image on the front, you could stamp part of that large floral in the bottom right corner and part up on the top left corner inside, leaving some area in the center to write your sentiment. So this idea is very simple, but it's to use the stamps from the front of your card to create a little bit of a frame look on the inside. Okay, for our next card, I thought I would use different stamps to fill in those tiles instead of the patchwork tile stamp set. This is a great opportunity to dig through your stash and use any small images you can find. I thought I would use hello greetings to match my main hello sentiment in the center. Now the two stamp sets that I used for the hellos are from Altenew. This is the Wild Geranium. There is a basic hello stamp. And the cool thing is the coordinating die set has this little hello also. I'll use that in a future video. I just thought I'd show you the rest of this set. It has some layering images that are really beautiful. But again, I'm just using that small hello. The other hello image I'm using is from the new Altenew Enamel Flowers stamp set. This one has uh, coordinating stencils, layering stencils, and coordinating dies available. But again, I'm only using that hello. So you can dig through your stash and find small images that'll fit into any of your st uh, stenciled or stamped solid images. It's a great way to change it up and to use products that you maybe haven't used in a while or haven't had the opportunity to use yet. So off screen, I inked the tiles up as you see here, just like we did earlier, but I used blues and greens this time. I'm arranging both of the hellos onto one of the tiles, and then I'm stamping with the same color ink, but stamping multiple times to make it darker. Now I will continue to move the two hello sentiments around, turning them different angles each time for a playful look, and stamp them tone on tone on all of the tiles. After completing all of the stamping on the front, I'm going to open up my card and create an inked frame. So this is my third idea for how to add a little interest to the inside of your card, and that is to add an inked frame. Now I took a piece of scrap acetate, this was from some packaging, and I die cut a rectangle from the center. And this rectangle is about three and three quarter inches by about five inches. And I'm putting that over the inside of my card so that I can do a small inked rectangle in the center. Now I'm applying a very light amount of ink along the edge of this die cut rectangle. And the nice thing is, is that acetate will hold up. So it works as a stencil. I basically created my own stencil or my own mask and I can save it and use it over and over. So I applied a very light blue ink around the outside, leaving it white towards the center. So I have a framed area there where I can write my personal message. 
I also thought I would add one sentiment stamped right across the top center of that opening. And I'm using an alignment guide, a clear alignment guide, to help me make sure I get this centered and straight. Now, whatever sentiment you put in here is totally up to you. I like to do something small and simple because again, the inside really should be about the personal message that you write. But this is a great opportunity to dig through your stamps once again and look for a sentiment maybe you haven't used before. You'd be surprised how many sentiments are in stamp sets that just go unnoticed. This is a chance to use them. Now on the front, I die cut the word friend from black and the word hello from black cardstock, and I'm gluing those together. These feature the two die sets I showed you earlier, the sweet sentiments and the versatile greetings, and I thought it'd be fun to pair them up. So you have the scripty word and the more bold word, and they fit there nice in the center. I will use my T ruler to make sure that that friend is straight. If it's off center, it will really be obvious because we have that geometric tile pattern. I did finish off the card by adding a hello stamped sentiment on the envelope. All right, so here is a closer look at it. You can see the tone on tone stamping has a different feel than the other cards we made because I didn't use the tile stamping. Instead, I used the hellos. This one's going to my friend Jeff. He loves blues and greens, and I thought this would be perfect for him. Now there's a look at the inside. We just did that soft framed area, which gives you a nice place to write your message. I chose to do a large rectangle for the inside, but you could do something smaller, like maybe create a heart mask or a circle mask. So you have kind of a focal point for your sentiment in the inside. But I prefer to leave a lot of room so I can write you know, a, a good size message on the inside. But do know you could do whatever shape you want. You could even do like a large diamond shape in there to mimic what you have on the outside. All right, now it's time for our next card, and this one is super fast. It gives you a colorful look, but with very little effort. This time I thought I would skip the sticky mat in case you don't have one and show you another way you can line up your stencils. I'm using the grid lines on my work surface to make sure that I get the stencil lined up at the right angle so it ends up being these diamonds instead of a square pattern. I'm putting little pieces of tape to mask off the corners and also to hold my card and my stencil together in place. To save time, this time I am not doing selective inking. I'm not masking off so that each square is a different color. Instead, I'm doing a rainbow blend. On one side, I did a soft red ink. On the other side, I did a soft blue ink. And notice I went pretty close to the center meeting there. Then in that center area, I'll do a yellow ink, making sure to overlap with the blue and red a bit to create green and orange. All right, so now I will do a quick spray of rubbing alcohol on this, wipe it with a dry cloth, and then I will move the stencil to the next position. Again, the stencil has engraved square lines that you can line up with the inking you've already done, so you can be sure you have the placement right. So once again, I'll apply yellow ink towards the center, then I'll do blue on the opposite end of where I applied it last time, and the red on the opposite end of where I applied it last time. So you can see now both ends have blue and, uh, and red, and the center is the yellow. This will look really cool when we take it off. And this is one of the best things you can do with stencils is do kind of a rainbow blend or do whatever colors you want. You could do blues, greens, and purples, reds, orange, and yellows, totally up to you. This time, I thought I would use the other stencil in the Patchwork Tiles stencil set. There's two stencils. This is the other one that allows you to quickly add a pattern. And so that I could get into the different areas with the different colors to match the inked tile below it, I'm using a smaller blending brush. This is the mini blending brush from Altenew. I really like uh, the large size and this size. I feel like between the two, you can uh, cover your options. The larger one allows you to co cover larger areas faster. And this little one allows you to get into the little nooks and crannies easier. If you prefer, you could just use whatever larger blending tool you have and use that little square mask trick that I showed you earlier, and I'll demonstrate again here in a moment. But basically, I'm applying a darker shade of ink over whatever color ink is below it in that stencil. And by the way, I mentioned the two different size blending tools. 
you don't need to have a ton of blending tools. You do not need to have a ton of sizes. If you're just starting out, I recommend getting like an average size blending tool and just get maybe three or four and have one for reds and oranges, one's for yellow, one for green, one for blues. And that way you can um, just wipe off the excess ink when you go from color to color. Once I'm certain that I put ink over each of those tiles, check out this result. I think that's just beautiful, fun blending. You could definitely tone it down a bit by using different colors if you want, but there's something about that yellow in the center that will really draw your eye towards the sentiment. As for that sentiment, I am using the Altenew Fancy Hello die, definitely one of my most used dies of all time. And I'm teaming that up with this Altenew Tiny Sentiments Hello stamp set. Now this is a small stamp set with a great price point, but it really it has a lot in it. A lot of great sentiments that work well on little strips. I cut the hello from black cardstock and then I white heat embossed a sentiment on a black cardstock strip and added both to the center on the front of the card. Now it's time for the inside of the card and this is what I normally do on the inside of my cards. I keep the inside of my cards blank and in it instead I put this removable, removable label sheet. I cut it to be slightly smaller than my note card. So this is four by five and a quarter inches and I stick that into the inside of my card. I have a message on the bottom that says you can remove this so that the recipient can go ahead and take it out, write their own message in it, and pass it on to someone else. That way you get more life out of your card. I have a whole video explaining this. Everything about it, I will link it up here in the top right, in my description below, and at the end of this video. It talks about this. This is what I normally do because I send out a lot of cards to blog readers and YouTube watchers, and I want them to be able to pass the card along. So you could incorporate some of the other techniques on the inside along with this, but this is what I usually do, and I keep it just plain underneath it. This was a little message Lila had written on one. I just put it in there to demonstrate. Now I did add little sequins to the center of the pattern on the front of the card that just catches the light and adds a little bit of sparkle. But really this is a very simple card design. You could definitely make it one layer by stamping the sentiment in the center instead of using the die cut. Lots of options here. So I have one more idea for what to do on the inside of your cards in this video. Remember my next video that'll come out probably tomorrow will have five more ideas, but this one's really fun and it's kind of technique-y and a fun surprise. This time I just have a white cardstock piece that's four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I wasn't sure what I was going to do, so I just started with a plain panel instead of a note card. And I'm taking the stencil and putting at a little bit of an angle. So I'll have squares going across the card at an angle. And here is another demonstration of kind of creating your own mask to help with selective inking. So you can see that die cut square is cut slightly bigger than the area we're inking. So I can keep this little mask here with this stencil set. So anytime I use it, I can have this ready to go. So say you have a uh, layering stencil set with different flowers on it. And you want each flower to be a different color. You could mask, you could use a smaller brush, or you could just die cut a circle from some scrap paper, kind of like I did here, to mask off the area you want by just laying it right over it. I've done this before in videos, but I thought it was a good to demonstrate it again here. Sorry I didn't think about it with my first card <laughs> that I inked up in this video, but hey, sometimes you, you, you kind of forget some of the tricks you've learned along the way. So here you can see I'm able to easily apply different color inks over each of the openings. Okay, so after I ink up each of the openings in this position, I will take the stencil off, clean it, and shift it over so that I can fill in the openings around our ink tiles. And now I'll do the same thing, ink up different colors in each of the openings. By the way, this stencil would also be good for getting placement of stamped images. You could lay the stencil over your note card and stamp like a circle in each of the openings, and it'll let you create a repeating pattern without having to measure anything out. I'll try to demonstrate in a future video. Now off screen, I use some of the tile stamps from the Patchwork Tile stamp set to stamp on top of each of those inked tiles. 
This is just like we did on our first card, but I mixed up the tile images I used and did that tone on tone stamping. And now for the fun part, my fifth idea for what to do on the inside of the card. And this is a sentiment that is in a window on the front. So the sentiment is seen on the inside and the outside. So I have this thanks die and the shadow die from the versatile greetings die set I showed you earlier. I'm using the shadow die to cut from the bottom of this inked panel. I will run that through my die cut machine and this creates a little window. Now, since I've done this on the front panel of my card, I need to do it on the note card too. And I need to get that thanks lined up right in the right spot. So here's the trick I do. I put my panel on the front of my note card. I'll just hold it there. I'll put a little bit of temporary tape right into that opening. I'll pop in this leftover piece here and then remove our card panel. Now I can take the shadow die, pop it right over that die cut. It'll line up easily open up my note card and run that through my die cut machine. And that will cut a hole right there in the front of our note card that'll line up with our card front panel. Now I could have done my inking and stamping directly onto the front of the note card. I just didn't think of it at the time. So I had to do this little trick to make sure that the hole was in the right place. Now we'll glue the card panel on top and you can see how the little thanks hole is uh, lining up nicely. Now I have cut the word thanks itself from black cardstock and I glued three of those die cuts together for a bit of dimension. I'll put glue on the back of that and then put it right into the opening. That way you'll see the thanks die cut when the card is open and when it's closed. So this is a really cool way to add interest to the inside of your card. Now I also stamped for all you do from that same stamp set I showed you earlier, the peonies one on the inside, so you only see that when you open up the card. There's plenty of room to write your personal message up there at the top. And in fact, I've done this technique in videos before. I will link to a really complete video on this idea up here at the top and at the end of this video. I did finish off the card by adding little pearls at the center of our little tile patterns. And this was a really fun way to kind of step up this pretty simple card design by having this window for our sentiment. I do have a few more things I want to share with you before we move on. Here's one that I created before and I forgot to mask off those blue squares. I make mistakes all the time. I just usually edit them out to save your time when you're watching the videos, but do know I make a ton of mistakes. I'm not gonna pitch this one. I just don't have time to finish it in today's video. What I'll do is die cut out the blue and pink squares and create new inked ones and pop them on top so that I can save that note card. And on this one, I plan to use these groovy flowers. This is another stamp set from Altenew. I noticed that these images fit really nicely in the center of the tiles and will give a completely different, more playful look to this stencil set. So this is another example of going through your stash and finding images that'll fit along with either solid stencils or solid stamps you may have. I also wanted to give you a few peeks at some of the cards that'll be in my next video. I'm not gonna show you the inside of these cards, that'll ruin the fun, but just to show you what uh, you can look forward to seeing in the next video. Now, I think I have like 15 cards for that video, and this is just a few of them. But be sure to check back for more ideas on what you can do inside of your cards. None of these are very elaborate ideas, but just simple things you can do to finish off your card and make it even more special. If you're interested in the products I use, I have them linked below in my YouTube description. You can also head to my blog. You have the ability to save individual cards or videos for future reference. And here at the end, I'll link to the other videos that I mentioned in this one. Thanks for spending this time with me, and I will see you again soon.